Hi, my name is Bob Evans. I'm from uh, in a place near Liverpool in the UK. And I first went to Medjugorje in 2009 as a curious tourist. And I was taken under the wing of a very, very good priest, Father Peter Glass. And uh, through his intercession, I witnessed a physical miracle, but also uh, I, uh, an internal miracle for me in the sense that I learned about forgiveness. And ever since then, I've been going back to Medjugorje every year, really to fill up the spiritual bottle, but also to say thank you to God. And during my, tr my visits since 2009, it's been my pleasure to uh, share my uh, experience with other people and uh, I don't know whether that's, have, uh, that's helped other people in their lives but it's really part of my mission is to spread the word of Medjugorje. So it's transformational and the transformations that I've witnessed could easily fill a book but the message that, that is emanating from Medjugorje is this, it's, it's unconditional love. And the fact that the Holy Spirit and Our Lady are so, so active there, reduces people to this vulnerable situation where they're prepared to talk about their experiences in life. And over these years, I can't tell you how many people have shared their, some of life's experiences with me over a cup of coffee or even a beer. But the message that I want to share with you is really one whereby uh, there's an exponential effect because one visit to Medjugorje can impact any number of people's lives as a result of your being able to tell people about your experiences. So I hope this testimony helps you. The one situation that I wanted to share with you was the fact that back in 2011 I was asking God in St. James's Church during Mass what is it that I can do for you and as I came out I was grabbed by the arm by a priest from Ireland Father Terry O'Connell and he dragged me off for a coffee and we talked now I'd met Father Terry briefly um, the previous day but he, for some reason he dragged me off and he talked about California where I was living at the time and in particular he emphasized that I had to meet a priest there called Father John Hampsh. Now Father John, I had no idea who Father John Hampsh was but I was back in California a couple of months later and um, I decided to google him only to discover that he was actually speaking at the uh, Anaheim Conference Center at an SCRC conference three days later. So I booked onto the conference and um, no idea what I was I was getting myself into. But I was there simply to, to, meet, to meet Father John in person and to arrange to meet him, which I did. And so after that, I wandered into the conference hall. I, I saw all these happy, clappy people. Uh, and I thought to myself, this isn't me. And I was about to leave when I saw a lady that I'd met in the Holy Land uh, six months before. She persuaded me that I should stay and during those four days of the conference I discovered what the Holy Spirit was all about. And I'd been praying after communion for the Holy Spirit to fill my heart, right? But I really didn't know what I, I was asking for. So now I understood it and uh, I opened my heart to uh, somebody and they, it turns out that they were the wife of the organiser, the president, and um, next day he rang me and we arranged to meet the following day. He brought, brought with him a whole raft of material um, from, uh, on a subject called Healing Your Family Tree. And I was in a situation where I really didn't understand the um, generational ba binding but I listened to it and I le began to learn. So if I ba backtrack to when I was on the conference I'd written an email to a friend of mine to say I wouldn't be able to meet him on the Sunday after all because the conference was 
uh, not finishing till Sunday afternoon. So as I was writing the email, uh, an email that I'd written to my youngest son uh, back in April when I'd been in the Holy Land, uh, suddenly jumped into the middle of this email. And that's the only way I can describe it. This, this email contained the exact email that I'd written to my son about the death of a young girl, eight years old. Um, and I'd said to him that I was going to have a mass said for her in the Holy Sepulchre, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Now, that email reappeared three times. And in the meantime, I was listening to a, a, a CD from Dr. Kenneth McCall, and he talked about children who hadn't been baptized, hadn't been named, hadn't been prayed for. And it came, came to mind that when, my, when I was 22, 23, my wife had had a miscarriage and I hadn't named the child and I hadn't prayed for the child. So there and then I named him Michael. And when I arrived at the church I was going to Mass at, there was a chapel there dedicated to Our Lady of, Our Lady of Guadalupe. So I prayed for another hour for the, about the boy and I then met a friend and we went to Mass together. Now this pre, um, preempted a meeting with Father John Hampsh and Father John Hampsh was an amazing priest. Not only was he a priest, an exorcist priest, he taught exorcism for 30 years in Steubenville University. He also was a trained psychologist, a suicide counsellor and marriage counsellor. He put into practice the gospel and from there I believe that the combination of spiritual and practical advice is the, is the real healer for people who are challenged these days in the world. The consequences of my meeting Father John Hampsh are still ongoing and it's a privilege for me to be able to record my testimony for the film that's being made about Medjugorje between the mountains and there is a coincidence in the sense that Father John Hampshire's name cropped up during my initial com conversation. And I sincerely believe that that is a consequence of the Holy Spirit working not only through me, but also with the producers of the film. So I hope you enjoy my testimony. I hope it inspires you to visit Medjugorje. Uh, there's, there's any number of ways in which you can do this. You can go with organized pilgrimages or you can go independently. And that goes from anywhere in the world. I went independently and subsequently went by pilgrimage. And I believe that Medjugorje, with an open heart, can transform your life. Thank you very much for listening.